Okay, it is just 5.30. We're going to get started. Welcome to Yoga Flow. This week, our theme is contentment, and we're exploring the niyama called santosha, which is translated as contentment. Um, and we can think about santosha as the active practice of gratitude and appreciation for what is. And the, the Yoga Sutra, that ancient text that's often referenced um, around yoga teachings, um, talks about santosha as bringing unsurpassed joy. So a Yangar um, uh, has this wonderful quote in Light on Yoga uh, related to santosha. And Yangar says, there is contentment and tranquility when the flame of the spirit does not waver in the wind of desire. So what the flame of the spirit not wavering uh, is about is, is a, um, how Deborah Dell says it in a maybe more um, plain language uh, that we think of today. It's about being able to stay established in a centered place as life comes with its ups and downs. As contentment is not about always being happy, but it's about staying centered um, through active gratitude practice and through finding that inner still space where we're always in that place of contentment despite the external ups and downs um, that happen in life with us. So in our week seven, Yoga Flow for Contentment, we'll be practicing a, a brief meditation on gratitude at the end of our practice um, to help us in that active cultivation of gratitude. And we'll be using our practice today as well, the few checkpoints where we can just notice the activity of the mind, noticing when we're experiencing something we really like, or maybe a judgment about dislike, and seeing if we can find that centered place, that contentment um, that's outside of our likes and our dislikes, our attachment and our aversion to our life's experience. So those are kind of the themes we'll be exploring today in practice. Um, our, so go ahead and stop the share. Our uh, physical asana practice is expired, uh, expired. <laughs> it's inspired by a teacher. Um, uh, Heather, let me get the last name. Heather Archer. Um, I found a lovely um, sequence of poses. And so this is a variation on Heather Archer's sequence related to contentment. So we will begin today. I'll invite you to begin in a child's pose if that's comfortable. You could also lie on your belly if that feels better for hips, knees, uh, ankles, feet today. So lying on your belly with the hands or forearms um, layered and the head resting there, or you could find a child's pose, arms stretched long or by the sides. Find a restful place to begin practice. And we'll find a few deep breaths here. Sensing into the flow of breath, the sensation of the body, and the activity of our mind as we come into practice today. A pause to make a mindful transition into our yoga flow. Maybe one more breath here. Then I'll invite you to move to a tabletop hands and knees position. Hands grounded under the shoulders, fingers spread wide, knees under hips, tops of the feet grounding down if that's accessible. A few cat cows, inhale breath here, exhale round head and tail under the body, 
as the back puffs up toward the sky. Inhale, the belly falls, head and tail lift, draw the heart forward through the hands, maybe lift the chin. Exhale, round cat stretch, drawing belly or abdomen navel toward the sky. Inhale, cow, head and tail lift away from each other and skyward. Exhale, round cat. Feeling a space between the shoulder blades. And inhale, cow, feeling a space, a broadening of the collarbones. Maybe one more round this way. Inhale and exhale breath. And then find just an easy neutral spine position. We'll practice a cat cow uh, body wave variation. So we're starting from the tailbone, tucking the tail, rounding through the low back then the mid back, then the upper back, and then the head and neck curl under the body. Now we're rewinding this. The head comes up first, then the neck and shoulders, upper back, mid, low back, and tail to that cow pose. Let's try that again. From the tail, tuck the tail, drawing underneath you, curling through the low back, mid back, upper back, head is last curling under the body then reversing it the head comes up the shoulders draw through heart through the hands then upper back mid back low back and tail a couple more waves from the tailbone rounding under tail to head to cat pose and then from head to tail moving into cow pose head to tail cow pose tail to head cat rounding through just finding a flow of breath here and then head to tail cow pose, inhaling and exhaling. Maybe one more, rounding through that wave, tail to head, and then reversing that wave, head to tail cow pose. And then pause, find a neutral spinal position here. You might push to a downward facing dog momentarily, or if you like, I'll invite you to swing your right leg around to the front of your mat, setting up for a lunge. Front knee over front ankle, and just find a comfortable stretch through the back hip, not overdoing here to start. We'll start with a sweep of the hand skyward when you're ready. Take a few breaths in this lunge. We'll take an inhale breath here. Exhale, let the elbows drop, cactus arm, maybe lifting the sternum skyward, the heart space opening up. <sighs> Inhale, fingertips skyward. Exhale, maybe opening to that cactus arm, feeling the shoulder blades gently draw together. Maybe a couple more. Inhale, hands skyward. Exhale, opening through the heart, <sighs> finding that easy flow of breath. Maybe one more here. And exhale, a cactus arm. Inhale, breath, hands skyward. Exhale, hands ground down either side of the front foot. Might be handy to have some blocks. Here we are going to bend and stretch that front leg. So take an inhale, breath. Exhale, lengthen your front leg. Comfortable lengthen. We won't be here long. Inhale, bend into lunge. Exhale, lengthen through the front leg. Two more breaths this way. Inhale, lunge. Exhale and lengthen. Last round this way. Inhale, lunge. Exhale, lengthen. And we're pausing here in the stretch. It's a cat cow spine. So inhale, lift the heart. A cow spine here in the stretch. Exhale, round cat stretch in this or cat pose, uh, cat spine. <laughs> inhale, cow spine here as the front leg lengthens. Exhale, round cat spine. Maybe a couple more breaths this way. You might also choose to just find some stillness and breathe in this easy stretch through the front leg. Maybe one more breath. Inhaling, cow spine, exhale, cat spine. And pausing, shifting forward into lunge. And you might move through downward facing dog or you can heel toe that front foot back to your tabletop hands and knees and just take the left side. So left leg can walk through down dog or you can heel toe the foot forward into a low lunge second side. Left knee over left ankle here. 
Again, not too much of a stretch in that back hip. When you're ready, hands come skyward in a lunge pose. You might choose to pick up the back knee here. Um, you could leave it grounded as well. So a little different arm variation. We're taking a cow face pose arm variation. Bend the right elbow, allowing the right hand to reach toward the mid back. Drop your left hand down by your side. Then bend the left elbow and reach up toward the mid back. Now we're reversing back out, both hands skyward. Second side, the left elbow drops. The hand reaches down to the mid back. Right hand comes down by the side. Then we bend the right elbow, the fingers reaching up toward the mid back. And rewind, let's add some breath. Just alternating sides here. Inhale, breath here, fingertips skyward. Exhale, cow face pose arms first side. <sighs> Inhale, unwind, hands skyward. Exhale, cow face pose second side, alternating top arm. Inhale, both fingertips skyward. Exhale, cow face pose arms. Inhale, fingertips skyward. Exhale, second side. Maybe a couple more this way. Inhale, hands to the sky. Exhale, winding the arms, first side. Inhale, hands skyward. Exhale, winding the arms, second side. And then both hands skyward, pause here. We're grounding the hands down either side of the front foot. Again, some blocks or maybe hands on a chair or other prop can be helpful. We're bending and stretching. And inhale, breath here and lunge. Exhale, lengthen your front leg. Inhale, bend the front knee, lunge. Exhale, long front leg. Using your breath for a couple more rounds. Bending and stretching through that front leg. And one more round. Inhale, lunge, exhale, long leg. Just a comfortable stretch. Don't overdo. Pause here. If you choose, you might add on cat and cow spine here to this hold. Inhale, lift the heart in cow spine. Exhale, round cat spine. Again, a comfortable stretch through the front leg. No overdoing here. Inhale, cow spine if you choose. Exhale, round cat spine. Maybe two more breaths this way. That's up to you. And last breath if you're here with that cat and cow spine. And coming back to bent knee, low lunge. You might ground your hands. You could step back through a down dog or heel toe your front foot back and around. And if you're not there in down dog already, I'll invite you to tuck your toes, span your fingers wide and give yourself a big push to our first down dog of the day. In this first down dog, you might soften or bend your knees a little bit so your hamstrings feel supported and not overstretching. You might pedal one heel closer to the earth by dropping the heel down and bending the opposite knee. And then switch sides. Drop the other heel toward the earth while you bend second knee. And just alternating bending knees, as in knees and stretching heels toward the earth. Few rounds with the breath here. And you might begin to find some stillness in that downward facing dog by grounding both heels equally toward the earth. One more variation here. You'll, I'll invite you to shift your weight to your left hand. And you might be able to lighten your right hand or even pick your right hand up and reach your right hand toward your left ankle. And then grounding both hands equally to the earth. You might find it's accessible to shift the weight to the right hand, maybe lightening the weight in the left hand. You might even be able to pick the hand up and reach the left hand toward the right ankle. And then grounding both hands center. Work here with whatever variation is best for you today. Inhaling and exhaling alternate twist, opposite hand to opposite elbow in this downward facing dog. 
Just a few more breaths. Inhaling and exhaling, just a few rounds side to side. And when you've equaled things out, right and left, find a equally grounded downward facing dog. And you might choose to take a vinyasa here if you like. Shifting the weight forward to plank on knees or feet. Take an inhale breath here. Exhale, lower to the belly as the elbows hug into the body. Inhale, lift the heart in low cobra, shoulders from ears, long low back. And then exhale, pressing back to child's pose, down dog, tabletop. You might choose to rest on your belly. I invite you to find a pose that feels like a little bit of a break after some uh, moderately intense, I would say, upper body work. If your wrists might feel good to have a roll around, if you are in a posture to do so, you might roll the wrists for another breath or so. And we're setting up for a standing sequence. Well, if you're not in downward facing dog, I'll invite you to find down dog. Find your right foot in your mind. And then when you're ready, float the right leg up and back. We're stepping the right foot forward between the hands or maybe to the outside of the right hand. That's up to you. Plant your back heel down for warrior one. And when you're ready, stretch the fingertips skyward. And we'll pause here in warrior one for a little alignment work. Check in, you want front knee over front ankle and that front knee bending toward, toward 90 degrees. Your back, an back ankle and foot is angled inward to an angle that's comfortable for you. And just hands in a place of comfort here in warrior one for another breath or two. We're heading into humble warrior. Let the hands drop down by the sides. If it's accessible, you could interlace your fingers at your low back and drop the knuckles down toward the back heel. Then if it feels good, you can begin to fold forward torso to the inside of the front knee. The chin and head might fall toward the earth. And then the hands might reach up and over the head in humble warrior. Take a few breaths here, checking in that front knee is still over front ankle. Hips are still sinking toward the earth. We're breathing evenly for another moment or two. And easing out of this humble warrior. So lifting the crown of the head up. Feel a little lift in the heart as the knuckles drop back toward the heel behind you. Maybe lift of the chin. And then soften and release the hands. From here, I'll invite you to take one or several steps so you're standing in a really wide stance at the front of your mat. So one or several steps, standing pretty wide at the front of your mat. Heels in, toes out. We're going into malasana or squat or garland pose. So we'll sink the hips pretty low. Elbows might reach to the inner parts of your upper leg. And if you have a block, you might even sit on a block or two here if that feels more accessible. Check in, you want your kneecaps aligned over your middle toes here in Malasana squat and your low back to feel really comfortable. Sometimes it can help to walk the feet out wider, a wider distance apart or closer together, depending on your body. Heels can lift or they can stay grounded. That's up to you. And just take a few breaths in this Malasana squat. See if you can't broaden open through the heart center, lift the chin gently, gaze forward and soften the shoulders from the ears. One more inhale and exhale breath. Our release will be to a forward fold. So gently lift the hips, let the head sink toward the earth. Maybe heel toe the feet in a little bit. Softening the knees or bending the knees. We'll step the left foot back. We're headed back to that warrior one. So set up with warrior one stance. And when you're ready, hands skyward, inhale breath. 
Exhale, the hands drop and interlace at the low back. Inhale, drop the knuckles back as the heart and gaze lift. Exhale, round forward, humble warrior. Inhale, we're lifting out, little lift of the heart. Exhale, release the hands to the earth, lift the back heel. We're stepping back to down dog for a pause here. And this is an opportunity for an optional vinyasa sequence if you'd like to take that here. You could certainly hang out in down dog, child's pose on your belly, or you could inhale, shift the weight forward, plank, knees or feet. Exhale to a hover to your belly. Inhale, lift cobra, up dog. And exhale back to your resting posture, whether that's down dog, child's pose or another easy posture. Take a breath or two here. And if you're not in down dog already, I'll invite you to head there. And then bring awareness to your left foot. It's your left leg that floats up and back this time, three-legged dog. Step your left foot forward between the hands or even to the outside of the hands on the left side. Grounding the back heel for warrior one. Sweeping hands skyward when you're ready. And we'll pause here for a little alignment check-in. Front knee over front ankle here. Our back foot is angled just inward. And the hands just in a place of comfort. They could be overhead or somewhere else, the heart, the waist. Take another breath here. I'll invite you to float your hands down by your sides. Interlace the hands at the low back if that's accessible. And then drop the knuckles back toward the heel and behind you. And if it feels good, you can hinge at the waist and fold the torso to the inside of the knee, folding forward, head might release toward the earth. And maybe the knuckles, the hands stretch up and over the head toward the earth as well. Hanging out in humble warrior for a breath or two. Checking in that front knee is still aligned over front ankle. We're still following the breath. And maybe here just noticing the activity of the mind. Seeing if you can't sense into some centering and groundedness here, even as we ride the waves of the mind and experience. We're easing out, release the hands to the low back, lift the crown of the head skyward. Just drop the knuckles back toward the back heel, lift the heart and maybe lift the chin a little bit if that feels good, little counter stretch. And I'll invite you to release the hands and one or several steps to the front edge of your mat to a pretty wide stance. Once again, we'll last in the squat, second side. So heels in and toes angled out. You'll sit the hips down, elbows coming to the inner parts of the upper leg. Again, an invitation to use some blocks or another prop, could even be a chair to find a little more ease in this malasana squat, if that feels better for your body today. Sense into some length in the low spine, opening through the collarbones, maybe a lift of the chin. A few more breaths here. Inhale breath. Exhale breath. Our release is to that forward fold. So forward folding here, top of the mat. Maybe heel toeing the feet a little closer together. It's the left foot that stays this time. The right foot steps back to our warrior one. When you're ready, coming up, hands skyward, inhale breath. Exhale, hands release to the low back and interlace. Inhale, knuckles drop toward the heel as we inhale and lift the heart. Exhale, humble warrior for folding forward. Inhale brings you out. Inhale, a lift of the heart as the knuckles drop back and down. 
and exhale. We're releasing hands to the mat, lift the back heel. We're coming back to our downward facing dog. Optional vinyasa sequence here. That's up to you. You might hang out in down dog or child's pose as well. An opportunity to make some choices about what's gonna work best for your body today. Beautiful. And making a choice here to take a few breaths in a resting posture. Sensing into the flow of breath, a beat of heart. And then when you're ready, I'll invite you to come down to your belly. We're setting up for some work in plank pose. This will be a forearm plank. You might align your elbows underneath your shoulders and ground the palms down to the mat. You might lift yourself up into plank on your knees. If you like, you can tuck the toes. And as you inhale, lift the knees. Exhale, you can ground the knees down. This is just an option. You can hang out in any version of plank you like. You might inhale, lift the knees. Exhale and ground down. Maybe a few more rounds this way. Inhale, if you choose, lift the knees. Exhale, ground knee, forearm plank. Up to two more breaths here. Inhaling and exhaling. And then I'll invite you to come all the way down to your belly. Pause here for a breath or two, maybe layering the hands and resting the forehead on the hands in crocodile pose, letting the legs just roll open. We'll take a brief counter stretch. So we're coming up to a sphinx pose. So the legs draw together if that feels accessible. Tops of the feet ground down and the elbows come underneath the shoulders if that feels good. And if you're feeling tension in your low back, walk your elbows forward so your low back feels really um, comfortably um, uh, released here. Draw the shoulder blades down the back body and lift the heart center forward and through. We're looking for an opening through the front side of the abdomen. So a little counter stretch to that work, activating those muscles in forearm plank. If you'd like to live, add a little active lower body work here, you can press the tops of the feet actively downward and squeeze the legs in toward each other. You might even think about pulling the elbows back as the heart center lifts forward and through for another breath or two in this sphinx pose. And then we're easing out back to that crocodile pose, just a relaxed leg position. The legs might roll open, forehead resting down on layered hands or layered forearms. You can stay here in crocodile pose or another resting pose you might take another round of forearm plank. This time we're taking a side plank variation. So grounding elbows under shoulders, coming up to knees or feet, that's up to you. We're rotating through side plank. So take an inhale breath here, center plank. Exhale, pick a side and head to side plank on that side, your choice, any side plank, knee, feet. And then inhale, gently rotating back to center plank. Exhale, head to side plank on the second side, your choice of side plank. And taking a few more rounds here, your variation of center plank and side plank, inhaling and exhaling. Our release is to that crocodile pose. So when your body, your core has said, yes, that was plenty for me today, you are welcome to move to crocodile pose. You might choose to do one more side to side here, equaling things out right and left. And then if you're not there already, we'll head down to our bellies. 
layering forearms or hands and rest the forehead down on the hands for a breath or two, legs releasing crocodile pose. Maybe one more breath here. Just noticing the sensations, the body, the flow of breath, the activity of the mind. And then an invitation here to locust pose. You might stretch the hands back behind you. If it feels good, you can interlace the fingers at the low back. And when you're ready, we're lifting as much of the body away from the earth as is accessible or thinking about floating the body away from the earth. Heart, legs, arms. You might lift the gaze if that feels good for your neck. We'll breathe here in locust pose for just a few breaths. Feeling length opening through the front of the heart. Ease in the low back as you lift. Inhale and exhale breath. And then maybe resting back down, releasing the hands for a breath or two here in crocodile pose. And I'll invite you one last time to head to your downward facing dog. So here in down dog, you, we're going to practice a body wave, just like we practiced the beginning of class. So if you want to take this on your hands and knees, you can take it on your hands and knees to start. But same way we did at the start, we tuck the tail, rounding through the tailbone, low back, mid back, upper back, and then head and tail. And then we reverse it, the head comes up and we wave back through the upper back, mid, low, and tail. So you can take that in tabletop or you can take it from down dog to plank. So here in down dog, you tuck the tail round through the low, mid, upper, back as you head into plank pose, then arrive in plank. And the head leads you back, curling the head and then rounding upper back, mid back, low back, tail back to down dog. So you can take that wave either position, rounding through the tailbone, low, mid, upper back, head into plank, and then reversing it, tucking the chin and letting upper back, mid, low, and then tailbone back to your down dog. A few more full body waves, either in tabletop or plank to down dog. Just a few more breaths here. And then when your body is saying that was plenty, we're heading to a comfortable seat. So you might just let the knees ground down, drop the hips to one side and let your legs swing around to the front or any other way you'd like to get to a comfortable seat is a-okay. We're heading to a shoelace pose. So I'll invite you to start by finding a cross-legged seat. And then we're going to cross the right leg over the top of the left as much as is possible. So I'll mirror you here. I'm crossing the right leg over the top as much as possible. Sometimes the knees can stack here, but that's not always accessible. Just find a comfortable cross. And then take a big inhale breath and exhale. I'll invite you to just take an easy forward fold to a comfortable stretch in this shoelace pose. Allowing the forehead to release down, the jaw to soften. And breathing into the outer hips, perhaps noticing a stretching sensation there, perhaps not. Once again, coming back to the activity of the mind. Noticing if we might be able to bring some awareness to a centering contentment there outside of our 
waves of experience, thought, and memory. I invite you to ease on out of this. We have one more place to go. So our right leg is on top. It's gonna be opposite arm crosses over. So it'll be my left hand over the top, my right hand behind me and taking an easy twist in the shoelace pose, perhaps looking over the back shoulder. A few easy breaths here. Feeling length in the spine, softness in the jaw, the shoulders. And when you're ready, unwinding that twist and unwinding the legs, maybe just bringing the legs long in front of you for a moment and give the legs a little wobble. Then finding that cross-legged seat once again. This time it will be the left leg, opposite leg on top. So left leg on top, I'll mirror you here. And again, just cross as far as is comfortable for your body. Sometimes the knees stack, but not always. And take an inhale breath here and then exhale, folding over the legs, allowing the head to release. And taking a few breaths, perhaps sending the breath there into the outer hips. Feeling the breath flow in and out of the body for a few more moments here in this shoelace forward fold. And lifting out of this forward fold, one more um, variation here, opposite hand. So my left leg is on top. So it's my right hand that crosses over my left leg be or my left hand behind and looking over the back shoulder, if that feels good. And an easy twist here. A few breaths, feeling some broadening through the collarbones softening shoulders from ears, softening through the face and jaw as is possible. Maybe one more breath here. And easing yourself back to center. Once again, we'll uncross the legs, maybe stretch the legs long in front of us. And then I'll invite you to come down to your back any way you like. You might roll to one side and walk yourself down to a side lying position and then to your back or any other way is just fine for a big full body stretch. Hands and feet to opposite walls. Then a nice hug of knees into the chest. If it feels good, you could curl forehead to knees. So one final hug in here. And then release to your relaxation pose of choice. So settling in, finding a variation that will feel restful and easy. If it feels comfortable, you might blink the eyes closed. You know, you might choose any practice you like for our final relaxation. If you like, and if you choose, you can follow along with my words here in a brief body scan meditation focusing on gratitude. I'll invite you to bring your attention to the breath. Just noticing the inhales and exhales. And letting that attention travel out into the whole of the body. Noticing the body here. Noticing if there are any ways you might adjust to find a little more comfort. You might choose to do so now or at any other time you begin to notice. And 
And you might allow your awareness to travel down into the feet and the ankles. Noticing what might be arising here in sensation. Noticing if your feet and ankles are working today. And if they are working, take a moment to have gratitude for feet and ankles that work. And perhaps becoming aware of all the work that they do for you. And bringing awareness to the legs and hips. If your legs are working today, perhaps taking a moment to cultivate some gratitude for having legs that work. And being aware of the, all the work the legs do for you, carrying you from place to place, allowing you to stand and sit And bringing awareness to the torso, the spine and back, the rib cage and abdomen in front. Just noticing the health in these parts of your body. Cultivating some gratitude for the gift of digestion. The circulatory system, the beat of the heart. You might move your awareness into the arms, wrists, hands, cultivating some gratitude for all the work your arms and wrists and hands may do for you day in and day out. Bringing awareness to the head and neck. A sense of smell, sight, hearing, touch. You may have some or all of these senses cultivating gratitude for the gift of these senses. And bringing the, back, the breath back to the body. Breathing in and out of the body here. Noticing the things that are right with you today. You might continue this practice of gratitude on your own. You might choose to simply let go for another few minutes here in our final relaxation. We'll be quiet for just another minute. When you hear my voice again, we'll be closing our formal practice.
It is just 6.15 and the close of our formal practice today. You are welcome to stay here in this relaxation pose for as long as you, as you like today. If you're ready to move out, you could begin to bring some deeper breaths into the body. Maybe blink the eyes open and bring some movement into fingers and toes. Whenever you're ready, rolling to one side and gently making your way to a seat without rush, with a great deal of ease and care for the body today. And as you ride the ebb and flow of the waves in life, may you know you have all you need to navigate those seas with equanimity and with contentment. Gratitude for your practice today. Thank you so much for joining me. Beautiful practice.